like to call this meeting to order a regular meeting of the village board on Monday, April 18th at 7 p.m. in the Germantown Village Hall boardroom. This meeting has been and also going to be accessed via WebEx. Uh, this meeting has been called had been given public notice in accordance with sections 19.83 and 19.84 of the Wisconsin statutes in such form that will apprise the general public and news media of subject matter that is intended for consideration and action. Roll call shows all village board members present at this time. I'll ask us all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, next item on the agenda is president's report on uh, not too much to report tonight. Just though a reminder that we are still um, having our 4th of July meetings and uh, still pursuing uh, volunteers and uh, donators uh, as well. There, there is an item on the agenda tonight that does uh, uh, clarify some of the things that are need to be done in regards to the 4th of July committee, but uh, volunteers, if people are looking to volunteer or to be a part of the festivities in one way or another we are uh, more than willing to to welcome you aboard and, and help uh with that event on the fourth if you participated in the parade before please plan on doing it again this year uh, so that we can have a, a full event and all that come to enjoy it uh will do so so uh, we welcome that that's all i have to report tonight next item on the agenda would be appointments motion to approve appointments Roman Hill Room 5 as provided. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve appointments that are listed under Roman numeral 5A, 1 through 13, B, C, and D. Oh, thank you. Okay. As, as presented. Any discussion on that motion to approve? Trustee Myers. Not a discussion, just in regard to under second here. Under number 11, I think this is the same list that we had last year. Yes. I spelled my last name wrong. Thank you. Still can't get it right after all these years. <laughs> Sorry about that, Dennis, but thank you for the correction. Any further discussion? No further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? None opposed. Motion carries. Next item is announcements of forthcoming events of public interest committee and department reports. We'll start with committee reports and committee chairs with Trustee Kaminsky. Public Works will meet in this room on May 11th, which is a Wednesday at 6 p.m. Thank you. Trustee Rick Miller. General Government Finance uh, just met and will meet again on Monday, May 16th uh, in this village boardroom. Okay, thank you. Trustee Myers. Mr. President, uh, public safety will meet in this room on May 2nd at 6 p.m. All right, thank you. Does anyone else have anything else for announcements of forthcoming events of public interest committee or department reports? Trustee Jan Miller. Um, we will have a 4th of July uh, committee meeting right here next Tuesday, the 26th of April at 6 p.m. Please join us. All right, thank you. Anyone else for announcements of forthcoming events? Public interest committee or department reports. Okay, then we can go on to the next item on the agenda, which is citizen input and public appearance on items not subject to a public hearing. There are no public hearings on tonight's agenda. If there is anyone within our audience or is joining us via WebEx that would like to come forward for citizen input or public appearance, all I would ask if you're joining us via WebEx is to make the moderator know that you would wish to speak during this portion of the meeting, if there's anyone within our audience, I will ask that you come to the podium and state your name and your address for the record. Is there anyone wishing to come forward at this time? Hmm? I apologize, I have a bit of laryngitis, so if I sound funny, that's why. 
before I get started, thank you to Ms. Brunschweig for including my comments in the minutes um, from the 4-4, as I had requested last time. Today, I have two topics, and I'll try and get through them quickly. I've, I've been doing some homework. I read the financial report from 2020 for Germantown. I could not find the 2021 2021 one. A few things I discovered. Um, on paper, the village's finances are in good shape. I also noticed that village staff should go to the dentist more. I look at the budget online and found it to be incredibly difficult to read in its current format. However, you are changing over to a new software system, which hopefully will allow a more traditional look at the numbers. In the report, uh, I found this great chart, which shows the citizens are the bosses. I attended the planning session last Monday. I, I would give it a mixed rating. Um, I did particularly enjoy the people at my table. We had some great discussions. Um, a planning session is an opportunity for the village to explain about development to citizens who don't normally think about land use. It can also help get people ready for change. This meeting was a missed opportunity in my opinion. And also as one of the tables pointed out, if we had had the matrix of uses to review, it would have been made the conversations deeper. And this is what they look like in the, in the plan. As you can see, I've started making some changes. Each neighborhood should have the opportunity to understand the proposed uses, what undesirable allowed and desirable means, and how this information is used with developers. For those who weren't there, we had a roughly 40 minute presentation on the history of the development of the plan and what I'm calling a sales job on a legal term and house layout style called conservation subdivision. The village planner wants this to be a required item in the rural area. We used our devices to answer questions in a digital survey. The first two series of questions were demographic data collection. In the thir third session, we were provided prescribed questions with prescribed answers that created essentially a steering situation, situation towards one outcome. This was evident as many people shouted out different answers. Many people realized that we were being herded towards one idea, towards this cons conservation subdivision. In a planning process, information should be offered in its entirety without bias or prejudice with enough time to review and comment. This is the second time that this has happened. This app was used at the Zoom meeting a year ago. Steering people to certain answers while not covering other subjects will render this planning process illegitimate. As the American Planning Association says, planning is about clarifying community goals, objectives, and policies in plan making. And participants should not misrepresent, misrepresent facts or distort information for the purpose of achieving a desired outcome by leaving something out or focusing on only one thing. This leads me to ask, when does each neighborhood get to weigh in on the allowed, undesirable, and desirable uses as set up for their neighborhood today? Who made those decisions for, the, for each of these neighborhoods? Where are the explanations for all land use options with diagrams in residential and other use? Why is single family housing de-emphasized in the plan? Some suggestions for the next meetings, of which there should be several. Um, there should be multiple meetings in each neighborhood so that trustees and villa residents can review their matrix for their specific neighborhood. Uh, less speechifying in the meetings would be helpful because time together is precious and we should be having more conversations rather than less. There should be more open-ended questions to cap and capture the answers. Questions such as, since we are a rural sub suburban community, what is the correct ratio of industrial use to, ho to housing, to commercial, to green space, agriculture? Where are the financial economic goals laid out and what does it look like in 2050? What's, what sort of hours of operation limits should be set for businesses beside residential areas? For existing residential areas, how many feet of forest and what type of noise and light barriers should be in place? Is there a priority of uses? If we do no development for five years, what do the village finances look like? Are we looking at 
Are we looking at better for the community industrial uses with higher wages and less traffic? What development policies are outdated? What are the development policies in place now? How will we maintain our rural suburban feel and quality of life? Open-ended questions pull ideas out of people, but it does more than that. If change is inevitable because a farmer wants to sell his land, which is his right, this type of activity helps people think through what is it is like to be in other people's shoes. It provides empathy. It also builds trust in the process, which there isn't at the moment. So the second topic is about development derangement syndrome. It's a real thing. I witnessed it working for the Golden Arches. People get tunnel vision, focusing on building things and forgetting about people and the effects of building on people. A trustee recently said that tons of developers are calling him every day. Well, let's stop throwing money at them. That will slow them down. Development goes in cycles and we are coming to an end of a development cycle or the late part of a development cycle. How do I know? Because there are so many dollars in the system, activity is high and indicators and red flags are popping up. Some of which are inflation at over 8% with Larry Summers talking of stagflation. Wage is not keeping up with inflation. The US runs on 70% consumerism and with wages going up, that cannot be maintained. Mortgage rates rising to over 5%. There, I looked today and they're at 5.25. Refis have dropped by 62%, that's huge. Another crazy stat is that 40% of the entire population of China is locked down. That's more than the total population of the US. And they missed their GDP target of 5.5. And they are still pursuing zero COVID. And then that's, that's not going to stop. What is likely to happen with development is that the push for more warehouse and industrial growth due to onshoring of business here will continue. COVID started the reversal from a just-in-time style of industrial logistics. So today there's a mismatch of available properties. To today's pace of industrial um, production, will, or I should say development, will last for about a year based on the current pipeline of industrial projects in developers' portfolios. This, I've read several real estate reports on this. And then as the Fed and Congress, ac Congress's actions start to kick, kick in, things are going to slow down. The infrastructure bill will cause a redirect of development dollars and has some tax code changes for them to absorb. The infrastructure bill um, is all about highways, green remodeling, and other things that are separate from um, current, the current um, activity. TIDs were designed for blighted properties in urban areas originally. With economic changes coming, we should not be so quick to throw money at developers. We should be asking them to pay for infrastructure. They clearly have the money. And we should be more picky about the types of industry in Germantown. We have the ability to pick and choose. Are these really good jobs that are being provided to us? What is the return on investment in, term of quality, in terms of quality? We are currently at 30% of our limit on indebtedness, as I understand, per state statute. And there are plans to add more TIDs and build a new DPW facility, which from what I understand, maybe around $30 million. This potentially could affect the village bond rating. And this was at the last um, village board meeting, Philip Cosson with Ellers made that presentation. And the, in the economy is changing. In other words, should the village tax space be funding development when developers have money sloshing around in their coffers today? By their nature, TIDs divert tax dollars away from fixing roads away from the school district, historical preservation or other uses. We might be flush now, but what about the upcoming recession that seems to be coming? As Trustee Kaminsky said two weeks ago, time to tap the brakes on development. So I have some suggestions for a to-do list for the trustees. Some of this will sound familiar. Put a hold on new development discussions until a full, proper, non-steered, comprehensive plan is complete. Review current development policies and determine what changes, if any, are needed. Reconsider the use of TIDs when developers have money. It should not be automatic. 
that industrial uses become, be, um, get uh, have a TID set up. If we are so great at preserving our German heritage, why do we spend less than $15,000 on the historical society and other preservation activities and millions on developers? Go to the intersection of Holy Hill and the highway and look east. Is that what Germantown is to become? What are the goals and objectives for the village? Why is it not all right to remain a sleepy town? Don't we deserve a comprehensive plan that reflects the residents of Germantown's desires? Have the meetings been really set up to ask that question? And lastly, don't sell our water. Without a full site investigation and pro forma looking out 20 years, there is not enough information to make the decision today. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Is there anyone else that wishes to come forward at this time for citizen and Porter public appearance? Hello. Um, my name is Judy Kautz, and I've spoken before. Um, and I just wanted to do a, I don't know, can I, can I do a poll? Can we have your address? For uh, the sure. Record? Uh, yep. N135W20647 Meadow Lark Lane. And who are you going to do the poll with? All of you. All of us? <laughs> everyone here. Um, well, actually, everyone there or everyone, everyone here? Everyone all over. It's only going to really just count for people who bought a home in Germantown. Do you, if you live in Germantown, I have a question for you. How many of you bought your house in Germantown with the intention to live there for either the remainder of their life or as long as they could? I mean, you might have to leave your home because you can't take care of yourself anymore, but how many of you bought your house so you could live there maybe the remainder of your life or as long as you'd like to live there? You didn't buy it, you only bought it for like a couple years? He's puzzled, you don't understand my question. I'm just wondering, okay, the reason I'm asking that is we bought our house and we were intending that that was going to be the last home we would live in, my husband and I, and we would stay there. And it happens that right now my daughter lives with us. Um, and so we, that was our intention. And the reason I asked that question is because um, our wells are being uh, possibly compromised because of what's been done with Germantown's building out by us and then putting in a well that they had intentions originally uh, to go deeper with the well and then went shallow. And so they're in our aquifer. So I sent an email to everybody today, um, all the trustees, and I apologize to you. I did not mean to address you as trustee. No, it's fine. It, I, he's the president, I did not demote him. It was my, it was, <laughs> we, were, we were in a hurry because of time constraints. It was a crazy day. The weekend was nuts. I, I just found out about the meeting on Friday. I just did not have time to really put anything together. To, so today- oh, Thank I you for that, I appreciate it. I'm sorry. No, that's no fine. No slight intended. Okay, so I wanted to just say, I'm gonna read what I sent because I sent the email kind of late, like five o'clock and everybody's probably done with reading their emails by that time. So uh, I'm gonna read what I said um, and also just to get it in the record. So I said that it was nice spending time with some of you at the round table discussions. I call them round tables because they were round. Last week, after the meeting, my daughter and I were approached by a farmer or landowner from the area. He and his brother own and farm most of the land in Germantown surrounding where I live. He also owns most of the land that is proposed for the warehouse-like building in Richfield. He obviously stands to make a great deal of money as he sells off the land to developers. His only interest is in selling these areas to the highest bidder. The landowner asked my daughter and I whether we would want Richfield to build a water tower on their side of the freeway or if we prefer for Germantown to sell water to them. We said we would not like either option and he proposed that Jackson would treat their wastewater. So that wasn't gonna be part of that. But um, so he asked us how much money we would like or think was fair for our private well protection. We all agreed that the $50,000 from Richfield and the additional $100,000 from Germantown would be too low to cover all wells in our area. And he proposed a higher amount and we agreed at the time that might be better. However, after further thought on this matter, I believe that the money is not the only issue. If something happened to our well, I would not be happy with the idea that they might have to drill our well deeper. The water in the lower aquifers is nowhere near the same quality as the water in the dolomite aquifer that we currently pump our water from. We would then possibly need some kind of filter for our water and who's going to pay for that? 
Germantown pulled a fast one when they told us they were going deep with well 12. They proved to be, this proved to be untrue. They're in the same aquifer as we are. For Germantown to predict that the water from well 12 will be enough for Germantown's current and future needs is not feasible. Quantity and quality of underground water in aquifers can change for a variety of reasons. And I spoke to the DNR about that, so I, I believe that's what they're telling me. Um, my solution to this whole problem is that Germantown drill well 12 deeper into the lower aquifers. They could then sell water to Richfield and have Richfield pay for Germantown to drill deeper. Also have them pay for the pipes needed to bring the water to Richfield, which they were planning to do. I also believe they should cover future maintenance costs. I don't think that should be on the village of Germantown. If this development in Richfield is a large warehouse like Amazon, they have plenty of money to pay for this. They got deep pockets. Why should Germantown pay for and meet Richfield's needs ahead of our own and then they profit from it? The proposal for sewer and water extension from Germantown to Richfield was voted down at the last board meeting. I believe the main reasons board members were not in favor of this was that they did not like the rapid pace of Germantown's development, tap the brakes. Information was incomplete or missing, which you pointed out. And most important, the trustees were listening to their constituents. I am asking that you continue to vote no on this proposal unless the conditions I listed above are met. And then on a different, somewhat related matter, um, I have been told by several people from the village that there have been traffic studies involving the I-41 Holy Hill Road interchange. I called the DOT last week and I was told that no such study has been done and or is currently in the process of being done, nothing. And I talked to Hans Higden and he told me that they will be discussing this area at Holy Hill Road and 41 at an upcoming meeting on April 26th. This was after a few emails back and forth. And then he said he is going to update me after the meeting. So I'm hoping they do a traffic study because it's a mess out there. And I have to drive that way quite often. And it's, it's actually kind of scary getting on the highway. I had to go that way today. It's snowing out, the visibility's poor. I got three semi trucks ahead of me getting on the on-ramp. And I have to sit at the top and wait until they get up down the road because they go so slow and it just it's dangerous and I just I think things need to kind of be slowed down out there you're adding so much truck traffic to our our um, subdivision our, not our subdivision but the area out by where we live um, so I just like you to think about the residents who bought a home out there and want to remain in their home and not have a problem with their wells so when you go to vote for things think about where we are at. We bought the homes first. We've been living there a long time. Um, I've been living in that home for 19 years. I want to, I said when I moved there, I was going to die there. I don't want to die in five years. So I hope that we still have water that whole time and that I can live there till I'm an old lady. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming forward. Is there anyone else that wishes to come forward at this time for citizen input or public appearance? Before I close this section of the agenda, if there's no one else wishing to come forward, I do have a communication. Uh, Mr. Jeff Braun, do you wish to uh, state something in public yes, input, public appearance? Yep. Okay. Can so, we have your, ad uh, your address, please? N140 W18316 Cedar Lane. Thank you. Uh, I'm shocked that providing Richfield with sewer and water is on the agenda again tonight. The number of residents that have come and spoke against giving Richfield water and sewer is significant. I heard only two to three trustees talk about people supporting this. We have not heard anyone who lives in Germantown speak or comment publicly in support of this. I looked at the maps of the proposed Ridgefield Industrial Park area, which includes a million square foot building. It appears that there are only a few landowners that will truly benefit from this. The benefit to those couple landowners is significant, millions and millions of dollars, I'm sure. I don't understand how this is continuing to push forward with significant and open opposition. 
it would seem that a few are pushing an agenda not in the best interest of the majority. It does not add up. And this body should get to the bottom of why and how this is being pushed so fast, so hard. Please vote no. Thank you. Thank you for coming forward. Is there anyone else who wishes to come forward for citizen input or public appearance? Okay, before we close. I'm Dan Getz, resident of Richfield, born and raised there all my life. Uh, doesn't sound like the sewer system will go to Richfield. I was a proponent for sewer for Richfield 50 years ago, but it didn't happen. Uh, Richfield and Germantown, even regardless of whether this goes through or not, uh, Richfield, I think, Pays well over 30% of Germantown school systems, which we're well satisfied with. Oh, I was wondering Richfield to get their own system, but it didn't happen. But that's okay. And uh, whichever way it goes today, I hope that Richfield and Germantown, with the valuation they have, can work together and peacefully work together and make progress. We have a big opportunity here between Richard and we have a, a major interstate going through us. We've got two railroads. We can do a lot for our citizens. And thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you for coming forward. Is there anyone else that wishes to come forward for a citizen input or public appearance? I do have one communication to read into the record. Uh, it was received on uh, Sunday, April 17th. And it states, Dear Village of German, Dear Village of Germantown Village Board, I am writing you in regards to providing sewer and water to Richfield. Being a former Germantown Village Board President and Trustee, I recognize the hard jobs you have in representing your constituents' best interests in Germantown, and thank you for your service. With that said, I would like to thank my district three trustees, Trustee Pieper and Trustee Myers, for taking the time to speak with me on the phone. I know this issue is somewhat contentious and I'm offering my position in regards to helping you clarify your opinion as to an approval or denial of Richfield's request. I do know it was voted down on 4-4 of 2022, but it is believed that this agreement will be brought back for reconsideration. As a resident living in District 3 and having my own well, I raise the same concerns other residents have made at the Village Board meeting held on 4-4 2022. In speaking with some of my neighbors, all served by their own wells, none had the knowledge of the village providing water to Richfield. In our neighborhood subdivision of Mount Brook, our lake swimming pond has dropped its water level by at least four feet and is now has to be supplemented by a well to maintain its own water level. While it cannot be determined as to the cause, it is most likely due to the improvement to the north. While I chaired the Public Works Committee, we were also led to believe that the direction of flow for shallow wells and the aquifer was south and it could not be determined if the direction of flow goes east and west. Also, a major concern is the liability to the village and Richfield within a one mile radius of the well. In speaking with former trustee and village president Art Zabel, homes outside the arbitrary one mile radius could be affected. This shallow well could affect Mount Brook's 41 homes, uh, Hilltop Highlands, Edgewood Drive residents, and additional subdivisions. If Richfield and Germantown are so sure that residential wells would not be affected, then I'm sure it would be responsible to set up an escrow account for 15 years at a value of $500,000. In regards to the approval for deep well number 12, I think most residents on their own wells would be upset to find out that the village decided to drill a shallow well rather than a deep well presented to the public. For the village board approved deep well drilling to be modified to drilling a shallow well at the public works committee and then placed it on the consent agenda without a public hearing falls short of the village's responsibility to allow public input. There is a significant difference between drilling a shallow and a deep well. Germantown should look to protect its own residents before providing water to a neighboring community. Germantown is a developer of our business and industrial parks and for Germantown to provide water to a competitor is not a logical solution. Providing water to Richfield will slow growth in our own business parks. Richfield can develop the area without Germantown water. Cabela's developed their property along 
with other businesses around them without a municipal well. Cabela uses the silo for water storage fire suppression. The same type of system can be used for fire suppression to development in the area requested for water service by Richfield. Reference has been made that the village of Germantown will get $9 million for infrastructure from Richfield. That falls well short of buying into a water system. I would estimate Germantown's water system infrastructure to be estimated value at 15 times that amount. If well 12 should experience failure due to contamination or a dry season, the additional wells Germantown has would supply the water to Richfield. Richfield will pay nothing for Germantown's existing wells and infrastructure as a backup. History is repeating itself. Richfield buys in cheap and other communities pay the bill. In 2008, as village president, I set up a meeting and had police chief Hale, administrator Shornack, and I meet with the Richfield administrator to discuss shared police services. Richfield did not back did not get back to me and simply decided to go with the Washington County Sheriff. Richfield went the cheaper route as Germantown's expense. The Washington County Sheriff understaffs patrols in Richfield and is supplemented by Germantown under mutual aid. Germantown is 34 square miles and Richfield is 36.47 square miles. How can Washington County Sheriff provide two deputies per shift for a ge geographic area larger than Germantown? I am sure the board recognizes that Germantown is providing ex excellent service to its residents. While I am not pr proposing we do anything like, like Richfield, we could reduce the size of Germantown's police department then contract with Washington County and have mutual aid from Menominee Falls, Mequon, and Jackson. That scenario would not be fair to our neighboring communities again because those mutual aid communities would not be reimbursed for providing mutual aid insurance. I also understand Richfield's fire department is having staff staffing issues. If Richfield should have a fire, have a fire, Germantown would most likely be called for mutual aid. Once again, the village of Germantown is a mutual aid insurance for Richfield at no cost to Richfield. Let's not repeat the past and please look out for the best interests of Germantown residents. If any of the Ver Germantown Village Board would like to discuss this, please feel free to call me. Thank you for your time, Tom Kempinski. Is there anyone else that would like to come forward for citizen and Puerto public appearance? not, we can go on to the next item on the agenda, which would be consent agenda. Board? I'll make a motion to approve consent agenda items A through C as presented. Second. Motion made and seconded to approve consent agenda items mm -hmm. A through C. Is there any discussion on that motion to approve? Like Trustee pull, Kaminsky. Pull A, please. Okay. Any other discussion on a motion to approve? We'll do a roll call vote on items B and C. Trustee Baum? Aye. Trustee Rick Miller? Aye. Trustee Hudson? Aye. Trustee Kaminsky? Aye. Trustee Jan Miller? Aye. Trustee Myers? Aye. Trustee Knightrider? Aye. Trustee Peeper? Aye. President Walter? Aye. Motion carried. Okay. Trustee Kaminsky, item A, consent agenda. Item A is approval of the minutes from April 4th and um, this is not a criticism, but I do have a concern that the people who opposed and voted in opposition to the water sharing proposal, our comments were really not included. If you read the minutes, were not included in there. Um, specifically, there weren't that many comments included, but Dean's was included as a summary of what took place here. I specifically had four points that maybe perhaps could be included or could be included in the next agenda that we are not getting enough with a $9 million underground pipeline. I want to see more something that our village constituents can see, touch, feel, park, parkland, something significantly more that was not in there. Um, I don't believe a giant warehouse of any kind, Amazon or anything else of that magnitude is a, a good thing for our community, whether it's across the interstate or on our side, because it's going to affect everything else happening in this community, from the use of our schools, our parks, our housing, our police, our fire. And I don't think we're prepared for that at this point in time. And personally, this is where I said, slow down. The residents I talk to say, slow down the development, get your plan in place, what's the rush? Um, and then finally, my other comment was, at this point in time, we don't have staff to handle all of this. We don't have, a, we don't have formally, um, we're having issues in the Public Works Department who's gonna actually be running that as an engineer. And we don't have the staff. 
And I just wanted those comments included as the side that's pushing back on this. And they weren't in there, and that I would appreciate. So your motion is to approve with approve the additional with comments? All, with all of my long-winded comments, yes, please. Stated as such? Yes, that'd be fine. I'd be, I'd be proud of that. She does need a second. We'll gladly second that. Nope, um, I got it first. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion to approve the minutes with the changes as, as uh, recommended? Trustee Jan Miller. I would like to add to the amendment. Um, actually, it states, it says page two, uh, Deanna, Julie Brown and Cedar Lane, she spoke again, which what should have been against. Thank you. Sure, she didn't speak again. <laughs> she might have came up twice. Plus, um, comment from page three, attorney. It says further discussion of a non binding and a non binding recommendation. Many non-binding. Non -binding. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Further discussion. Trustee Phil Hudson, you had your hand up. My comments are not in there either. I'll send them in. Okay. Any further discussion on the motion to approve the minutes with changes as requested? No further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Not opposed. Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is unfinished business, potential reconsideration of intergovernmental agreement with the village of Richfield for sewer and water services. Make a motion to reconsider the intergovernmental agreement with the village of Richfield for sewer and water services. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Trustee Rick Miller. Since I brought this back, um, First off, I think this is the second time in eight years that I was on the board that a reconsideration has even uh, been considered. Um, so I don't take this lightly, but there was some things that were bothering me that night already, and there was things that bothered me until, um, until this next meeting. A large part of the discussion was about the protection of the private wells. The, the well issue is only linked to the agreement because of Richfield saying that they could set aside $50,000 for the restoration in a boxed area that, that was presented to us. I can tell you there's already safeguards in place for wells and if there were something to occur, but you don't know that. This was handled completely wrong. This needs to go through general government and finance. We need to address it. It will come back. I've already talked to Administrator Kreklow about putting it on general government and finance on the next agenda, and we will discuss this we will get the safeguards in place. As it stands right now, $50,000 from Richfield and the proposed $100,000 from Germantown is null and void because the whole thing is null and void. So there is no, no quote, extra money being set aside right now for the wells and protection of those. We will handle it. You will be assured that, that if something were to occur to your well, it's most likely an insurance matter, and it would be covered under that, but we will get into that in GGF and be able to uh, discuss that further and make sure that um, everyone here is informed of, of the proper way to handle that. Uh, with the private well issue aside, again, that's, that's most of what the discussion was about. We really didn't discuss the contract. Tr Trustee Nyrider had a bunch of questions, and they were good questions. They never got answered. They never even had a chance to get answered. Um, before those were addressed, we voted. I, I asked for some further information, but I was fumbling. I didn't even say what, what it was. Well, I really wanted to get down to the 2050 plan and have a little bit more uh, finality on that. I don't necessarily need the 2050 plan cast in stone. Why do I say that? Because it can change. The 2020 plan has changed many times over the years. But we need to have a, an area, at least a good understanding of what's going to be on that 2050 plan. Um, and that really wasn't discussed either. I'm not talking about small changes. I'm talking about if we're taking an entire area and we're going to change it to something else. Um, 
Now, with that, I didn't want to blindside anybody here and think that we that we we could potentially vote on this tonight, but my desire would be that if this reconsideration passes, that we will table this motion to give staff enough time to get the information that Trustee Nyreiser wanted, get a little bit more time on the 2050 plan and, and finalizing that before we bring this back for a vote. So that would be um, kind of the second part of this. I will motion to table this if it passes reconsideration. Before we go any further into any more discussion, I'm uh, just going to turn it over to the village attorney to give everybody a refresher on the, the what what reconsideration is and how it is um, how it works in regards to Robert's rules. So, village attorney. Um, sure. Uh, so uh, we've already got the first step, which is we have a motion and a second. Um, if the motion passes. Uh, at that point, what Robert's rule says is, is that the t the motion that was on the table immediately before the vote, uh, meaning the motion that we all voted on, um, that question is back on the table. Um, and you can do with that motion as you please, just like any other motion at that point. You can amend it, you can uh, vote on it, you can um, table it, you can you know do whatever it is that you want to do with that particular motion uh, once reconsideration is approved, if it's approved. So then the vote has to first occur on reconsideration, and then after that it picks up the motion where it was left off before the previous vote and then any amendments or, or board changes can be then entertained at that time. Correct. Thank you. Is it simple majority? Yes. Okay, thank you. Trustee Peeper. So if I wanted to per se have if it if it is approved for reconsideration, but I want it only to be approved for reconsideration if it goes to a referendum, would I do that now or after? Uh, you would do that after that that effectively the question on the table is limited to whether we reconsider or not. Once it's been reconsidered, certainly an, an amendment to require it to go to a referendum would be appropriate at that point. So I can't make an amendment to this motion. Okay. All right. Further discussion. Trustee Jan Miller. Um, I, 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 um, I hear what you're saying. Um, Trustee Miller, Rick Miller. Um, but I have to, uh, reiterate, uh, what I've said before and that, um, the, the people that are directly affected in my eyes have shown up. And even those outside the whole, I'm going to say Northern section, Holy Hill area are very concerned. Mm -hmm. My concern is exactly what, um, trustee Kamensky said is we don't have staff. We don't even have, um, a system where we can bill people correctly for utility bills right now. I see that as a huge, uh, we're transferring systems. It's not up and running. I see that as a, a, a real red flag. Um, if you want to take on more, I, I don't believe that we should be uh, considering something at this with this magnitude when we have. Um, I'm just going to throw out a number: an estimated 800 um, acres available to develop ourselves. And I think we could, I think we should also take into consideration. I don't remember anybody bringing this up, but we have a uh, industrial customer, our number one customer that we, we have to supply. I understand that we take all the wells and we blend the water, reconfigure it. You know, any water guys, you can correct me if I'm wrong and then supply it. We have deep wells, we have sh uh, shallow wells, but it it's way too fast. I did go to the other side to Richfield. I had a very nice dinner, oh, lunch actually. And I went over the expressway and I'm looking east and it is a sea of buildings. It's square buildings. 
So, um, and the final point is Germantown doesn't have to be Kenosha, Racine. It doesn't have to be an industrial state. Uh, we have a lot of developments that are residential that um, we should uh, pay attention to. Um, we're trying to find a, a village center to revitalize. I think we should listen to our employers, employers, and um, and just put the brakes on. I'm not in favor of this water. Um, I don't know how to pick that. I want to start picking that apart a little bit. Um, I have I have a concern when statements are made that we don't have staff. We contract That's it. for engineering. That's what we do. That's what we have been doing for a year. So there is staff available for these projects. We pay them to help us with that. Are they internal in our doors? No, but we do have a source for engineering. So to say as a statement that we don't have the staff to have uh, to do the engineering on that is not a correct statement. We pay for that. So that is there and it is part of what this board has chosen to do for our engineering department. Um, the next portion of reasoning of, of uh, billing uh, to me doesn't apply and is being fixed as we speak. It is being uh, repurposed and will be put into place. This isn't gonna be starting next quarter. It probably won't be starting for a year. So by the time that any other additional bills would happen from Richfield, if additional bills would be happening from Richfield, uh, that, that system will be put into place. Uh, and would be working not only for our residents, but would be working for anybody else that would be added to that system at that time. So I, I don't like statements that say we don't have engineering available for our projects. We do, we do, I and mean, we pay for that, we contract for it. I, I didn't specifically mean engineering. I just mean we have some gaps in, in other departments, okay. period. Trustee Phil Hudson. As long as we're talking about going around Germantown and looking in different directions. Over the weekend, I went to uh, County Line Road uh, in, in the vacant parking lot of where uh, World Market and, and Pier 1 used to be. Uh, and we have uh, tens of thousands of square feet of, of open retail commercial space right now. Uh, as, as most everybody here knows, uh, I live in the Winsong subdivision uh, across the road from, from Kinderberg Park. Uh, and I was uh, one of the key people that fought against the, uh, the development that's called uh, Kinderberg Estates. Uh, and now that we're 18 months down the road, uh, we were successful in uh, shrinking that development down and, and honestly, it looks it looks pretty nice, and I think the average sale price in that subdivision for homes is somewhere around six hundred and fifty or seven hundred thousand dollars. My question is: is this deal is is not about a, a one million square foot building? It's not one building that we'd be helping Richfield with. It's residential and it's commercial. So in essence, we would be supplying our own competitor. We've got a vibrant housing market in Germantown right now. Nothing against the village of Richfield, but I can't understand why we would want them to become competitors in something that this village is doing pretty well right now. I also don't think that putting a whole lot of commercial square footage right across the highway is in the best interest of all those vacant buildings that we have in Germantown. This, this is not a, this is not a one building development. This is providing a, a critical asset to our competitors right now. And I just don't understand why we would reconsider doing that. Thank you. Further discussion about the motion for reconsideration. 
Trustee Kaminsky. A couple of comments. Yes, we do have staffing issues without getting into them in the public works area. And if we can talk about spending all this money on gray for any other engineering firm, that's not the way it's generally done in a village. And once we get our act together and once the job market opens up, we can start steering straight ahead with engineers and things on staff again. So, no, I mean, we do have an issue. There's nobody's going to tell me we don't. Um, second, um, anybody in the audience or anybody listening who's worried about their well, that is an entirely separate issue. So don't let that cloud your, don't say, okay, then go ahead and give them water. It's a separate issue. If that well is going in, we're still going to have to consider your concerns. And that's what we're going to do in general government and finance. But take that, cut it away from what we're talking about now, which is sharing water with Richfield and having no control over that development, what it may be, what it may look like, how big it could get. Oh, yes, there's like limits on the amount of water we can send over there. How long do you think that's going to be in place? After half of this village board is gone and new village board people come in in the next uh, couple of years. I mean, we're trying, I'm personally looking towards the future of developing this more carefully. And let's get our side of the interstate done first. Whether people agree with me or not, that is firmly where I stand. Let's think about Germantown. Let's think about our water needs. Let's think about our development needs, our 2050 plan. And already Richfield told us they can go to Jackson and get water. Let's set them free. Like I said in our last meeting, I frankly was appalled to see this back on the agenda again after we spoke last time and after we listened to our constituents. And I want our constituents to know we are listening, at least some of us are, and just take note of who those people are. Further discussion on the motion for reconsideration. Trustee Baum. So I seconded the motion because I don't think we've had the discussions necessary for this. And if I shut down and vote no for this, I'm not sure I'll ever get those discussions. We have not had a debate in a closed session meeting. We always waited for it to come out here. We took straw polls of what we thought. No, I, you look at me that way, but I don't think we've had the form discussion. We've never talked about police. We've never talked about fire department in closed session. What is it that we need? What are all the other issues? I've listened to everybody. They brought up a whole bunch of issues that these documents don't talk about. And I don't think we've talked about thoroughly. I would like to hear more information. I would like to hear more. I would like to be able to have a discussion with the neighboring community. Here's our concerns. Here's what we need. Here's what it's going to take for us to move forward if we want to move forward. But I'd like to open this back up so I can have those discussions. For a discussion on the motion for reconsideration. Just a question. In about reconsideration, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Trustee Kaminsky. Just in response to Trustee Baum, we've been discussing this for a year and a half, and we got very detailed in all those closed sessions, very detailed. And I'll guarantee you, if you want to discuss it for another year and a half, which would be my, then what I would want to do, because it would go away. Um, if we discussed it for another year and a half, you still aren't going to be able to say, well, we need six policemen or four. We don't know what's going in there. We don't know what they're building in there. They have not shared that with us. We just know it's some kind of big box warehouse that personally, do we really want that in our neighborhood? I wouldn't want it on this side of the interstate or the other side. Um, if you look at those questions that were in the minutes, the ones that were in there, we discussed, I would say, 75% of those and the other two you're not going to get answers to. So don't tell me we didn't discuss this. A year and a half of discussions is what brought us to that vote the last time we were in this meeting room. Further discussion on the motion for reconsideration, Trustee Rick Miller. Making an assumption that if we kill this, that it's dead and it's not gonna happen. And that's not true. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen at some point. And if if we reconsider this and look at it again we've got some leeway we've got some input into this if we kill it right now fine you know i'll accept it but it will happen and then we have no discussion and we still need the infrastructure that you're talking about it's going to be on their side but yeah 
I, I thought we wanted people to use our restaurants. I'm not sure about that, but I thought we wanted our gas stations and our restaurants to be used by other people. Um, and yeah, that comes with uh, patrolling and, and things like that as well. Um, but to, to say that, to say that this isn't gonna happen is, is wrong. Trustee Chan Miller. Um, this board already voted it down. I thought I was, I was aghast that it was on the agenda. I thought I was reading incorrectly. I believe we told our administrator and legal team that we, we go ahead, get the best offer you can. And this is what they came back with. We discussed this in the closed door. We had Larry come up and and give us details at nauseum about how deep the well is, how many, um, I don't know, gallons per minute, um, pressure. Thank you very much, Larry. It was enlightening. So I, I, I can't say if they, if this is their best offer, it ain't changing. And they clearly didn't care about wells. Okay, or even if you took that off, it's about creating Germantown, taking care of what we have, finishing the 2050 plan and, and keep moving forward. I, I feel like we're just like a couple of, a bunch of gerbils on a, on a wheel with with keep, keeping talking about this and then when we cut it off and now it's coming back and it we have the 2050 plan to tackle and um, taking care of our own fire and police department they need they need resources we're having a hard time getting resources and I'm talking about bodies um, to protect our our village. Uh, I think the, the biggest problem I have overall is I don't believe in <clears throat> sharing our natural resource. They have the natural resource. They don't want to put in their own sewer and water. That's what they said. They, they took a look at it and they said it's too expensive. So we're supposed to foot the bill. And, and we're worried about our uh, residents' taxes. How, how long is it, to, to Kamensky's uh, point, how long is it gonna last and then they'll be knocking on the door? So let's build our own IT system, billing system, get our, get the employees that we need in the in the DPW. We're building a DPW with worth about 26 million. Is that not enough? We have other departments that need buildings as well. So I think we need to be laser focused on Germantown. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion for reconsideration. No further discussion. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Trustee Nyrider. Thank you, Mr. President. I am um, in listening to the arguments tonight um, to reconsider the motion. And I personally don't have a problem to reconsider it if we if we go in and and answer all the questions that are out there. And there are a lot of questions out there. But I guess one thing that enters my mind is. GGF doesn't meet until is it May 16th, Rick. GGF doesn't meet until like May 16th. Correct. It's going to take us more than a month to go through all just to get not on, that. Not on the wells. You don't think so? Okay. But how long, how long is Richfield going to wait? And not that that should be a concern of ours, but if we're going to go through all these motions, do we know that a month from now or two months from now or three months from now, Richfield's going to be here yet or they've already started working with Jackson and they're on their way with Jackson. 
So I think that that should look into our that's a big portion of our consideration as well. My only and that's a good question, Trustee Nyrider. Um my only reply to that is that they're in the audience, so there must still be some interest. Further discussion. Present. I, I, I think additional answer, uh, Trustee Nyrider, uh, is just the fact that a lot of those questions that are unanswered will require discussion. And if at some point the discussion just stops, that's kind of our signal that we're done. Um, but until that happens, I, I think you potentially continue to have the discussions if that's what the board directs. Further discussion on the motion for reconsideration. Roll call vote. Trustee Rick Miller. Aye. Trustee Baum. Aye. Trustee Hudson. Nay. Trustee Kaminsky. Nay. Trustee Jan Miller. Nay. Trustee Myers. Aye. Trustee Knightrider. Aye. Trustee Peeper. No. President Walter. Aye. Five. Motion carries. Motion carries. Reconsideration. Make a motion to uh, table the intergovernmental agreement with the Village of Ridgefield for sewer and water services. Second. Motion made and seconded. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Opposed, raise your hands. Two, three, four. Motion carries. So at this time, this is tabled. And there has to come up with a, a list of questions for staff if that is the direction that this board wants um, so that if it's brought before the next agenda uh, those questions can be um, researched and, and answered that takes care of unfinished business any questions i need you to come forward please so people at home can hear i would appreciate that Okay, I forgot to say my name before, Melanie Smythe on Cedar Lane. Um, so let me understand what you just decided. So you decided that in a month you will entertain questions for uh, discussion? We'll direct staff to, to bring, uh, we will, yeah, we'll entertain questions for staff to bring forward or to get answers for what other board members are looking to have answered. Okay, so we have basically a, a month, a month? Two or is it two weeks? Uh, usually two weeks. Two weeks because you've got every first and third to put questions together. We do, yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. But we can supply our uh, representatives sure. our questions that sure. we think should be asked, and also what a proper site investigation report looks like and what a pro forma looks like in order to make the decision, because it's 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 more about what wasn't discussed in the presentation. There's a lot of gaps in that agreement. There's a lot of language that's missing in the agreement. It's not a real estate deal. It's not, it's not, it's supposed to be a real estate deal, but there's not enough information in there. So in my experience, it takes one to two years to put something like that together, a full proper look at a real estate deal. And, and I'm talking about a three, 3,500 square foot McDonald's restaurant with 25 parking spaces or something like that. This is bigger, and there's many more stakeholders between the railroad, um, all the other entities. I mean, you've got a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff that will have that will have to be done. Well, we're not going to get performer on what is being built in Richfield. The performer would be more on uh, the costs to cover sewer and water maintenance. Correct. I understand that. Okay. Yes, I'm not talking about their real estate deal. Correct. I'm talking about your real estate deal with Richfield because you are entering into an agreement with them to manage their property. Oh, to manage our infrastructure within their property. Right. So you'll be on their property and Correct. our Germantown people will be over there operating on their property, dealing with their residents and all those kinds of things. We would be dealing with the with the people within the land that would have our infrastructure on it for any maintenance yeah. or or any type of uh, repair right. needed. Right. I mean, I mean if it's that, that's all I'm saying. I'm just trying to paint the picture for everyone. Right. Of what my understanding of what I'm talking about when I say site investigation, it means every entity gets um, interviewed, 
under, you understand all the costs associated mm -hmm. with that, because at some point, um, it may look like it just doesn't work out. I mean, that's why you do these things is yeah. you say good, good um, possibility for success. Maybe not. Absolutely not. I mean, you have to look at all those things. Correct. So, okay. I'm just clarifying things and I want to thank you for your explanation of what's going to happen in two weeks. Okay. We'll be putting together some questions. Great. Thank you. Next item on the agenda, new business. Item A, fire department lateral transfers. Motion to approve. Motion made and seconded. Discussion or information. Anything? Chief Delane will come up and provide a few explanatory comments. He stayed. He might as well make some comments. Uh, before you is a request to work with the a collective bargaining unit to establish some ground rules uh, and to accept lateral transfers uh, for new hires coming uh, with experience from other fire departments, uh, similar to uh, what the police department presented uh, a few months ago. Um, seeking full time, we, we currently have two full time openings on our department, both for uh, fire, fire paramedics. Uh, applications have been very slow to come in. We've received one in the last two weeks for that position. Uh, so we are looking to open it up for lateral transfers. Okay. And that still goes through police and fire commission or just straight through? They would still, the applicants would still go to police and fire commission. Okay. All right, further discussion or questions for the chief? No further discussion, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye, aye. opposed, not opposed, motion carries. Thank you, chief. Next item under new business is item B, Wolverine Fireworks contract. Make a motion to approve as presented. Up. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion, Trustee uh, Jan Miller. Um, actually, um, the this is for the fireworks uh, contract. And the next item is the creation of the nonprofit Corporation for the 4th of July, and we wanted to know if we could get the nonprofit name on the contract for the 4th of July rather than the village of Germantown. So, can we flip flop that? Uh, B and C. Um, the, uh, the question I was just asked was who, uh, who is paying for the contract? Um, the, uh, the village budget includes um, $8,500, which was estimated at the time the budget put together to be 50% of the fireworks contract. Um, and then the uh, Tourism Commission transferred uh, the remaining amount, 10,000 some dollars uh, to the, um, actually to the village park and rec department to pay for the remainder of it. Um, there would have to be, I think, some additional action to get the money to the 501 C3. Um, I, I, I don't either way, I think is if is from the village administrator's perspective is fine. Um, we did it this way because it was the most expedient, quickest mm -hmm. way to get the contract done and get paid. If, if the village board, if you approve it as presented, the village president could sign the contract tonight. We can get it to Wolverine fireworks tomorrow. I say, well, my yes. recommendation to get them the money so that we're not losing a spot uh, right. because we've already known that uh, for information provided by trustee Myers that you know the um, the, the fireworks are not entering any new contracts and um, they're hoping to have everything that they're covering right now in on time you know based on how everybody else is trying to get uh, supplies and so I think the sooner we could get this approved and in their hands I think the better it is for us to to have a successful fireworks display Trustee Rick, oh, I'm sorry, Trustee um, Phil Hudson. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to amend the amount to uh, $25,000. We've, we've had some preliminary discussion with Wolverine that they may potentially be able to supply a, a larger display this year, um, which would extend it and make it more exciting. He does. <laughs> That was a motion to amend, correct? Trustee yes. Hudson? Yes. Motion. 
Motion made and seconded to amend the contract from, is right now it's at 18.5? 18,850. Okay, it's at 25,000. Yeah, that's, that, that's a potential. Uh, we are not sure they would be ever able to deliver on that. They, they have reassured us that we certainly can have what we had last year, but they have also told us they do have the potential should we choose for a better and longer display. Discussion on that motion to amend, Trustee Rick Miller. How would you fund the difference? That was my question. This is already allocated from our budget and from the Tourism Commission. Correct. How, where would the, what are, what are you proposing for the balance? Where would that come from? The miscellaneous park and rec ARPA money that we set aside. Is there such a thing? There was um, in the um, in the ARPA plan that the village board adopted. There was um, twenty five thousand dollars that was um, directed towards miscellaneous park and rec projects. Um, I I don't recall a hundred percent with one hundred percent confidence. On the top of my head, if, if that was lumped in with the other buildings money um, uh, to go to GGF for final approval. Um, but having said that, I there certainly would be ARPA money available um, within, uh, you know, within the amount that that hasn't been specifically allocated by the village board yet. So then within your motion to go up to 25,000, do we need a separate or is it inclusive that the difference of $7,150 would come from the park and rec ARPA fund? Is that your intent within your motion to amend? That is my intent. And that is also the intent of, of the second as understood? Okay. Does everybody understand the motion? Yeah. I want to go back to uh, Trustee Baum and then I'll go back to Trustee Rick Miller. Uh, just to play devil's advocate, how big is big enough? Why don't we spend thirty thousand? Why don't we spend forty? What? Why? What's twenty five get us? In a statement, it gets us, a I believe, ten, no, ten, ten minutes longer. Is that what they said? But about ten minutes longer to answer your question. So and so the, what's the number? Seven thousand dollars for every seven thousand dollars. I get another ten minutes. I'm, so if I I'm, were to spend I'm, I'm not an expert in fireworks. I mean, I can find that out for you. I but think that's the only question I would. Pushback I would hear is it's big enough. I'm not going to push that issue, but that's okay. the question. We have fireworks poo -pooer. Poo -pooer. Yeah. Trustee Rick Miller. So I, I'm okay with this, but ARPA funds, uh, no restrictions on that. I mean, we can fireworks. use the ARPA funds for fireworks. <laughs> you I mean, get to blow them up. No. We may have, we may have found the perfect use. Ouch. I, I uh, one of the one of the guidelines that uh, made the most sense to me when hearing this is if is it was uh, one of the auditors said you have to apply be able to apply the straight face rule, and I think in this case I could do that that um, uh, and argue that especially with this type of event and the importance of tourism um, and people visiting the village trying to reinvigorate some of those businesses and restaurants that I could make the argument with a straight face. So I, th I feel comfortable with that. All right, further discussion on the motion to amend. Did One somebody more thing have I, your hand up towards the end? I still got the floor. Oh, you do, I'm sorry. Um, what I was gonna say is that typically uh, Deutsche Stadt Heritage Foundation, the MyFest committee usually donate some to the fireworks as well. Now that's not a foregone conclusion, but um, they usually donate uh, some money towards the fireworks every year. We, we would welcome that. So if that happens, then the difference would then come? Well, that's the question. What do you do then? On the well, I, I think- Or, uh, you know, running this 501c3, there's going to be needed money in order to get that off the ground. Right, but what we're thinking is, um, 
because it's coming through park and rec uh, and the contract currently has a village on it, we still go through with it that way. We get it in their hands faster mm -hmm. than it would be right. to transfer it over to the 5013C. So, um, and that way we're securing our spot. So I, I would prefer just to, if we're gonna approve this, then continue to go down the road that it's, we're our name on the contract. If it gets approved, I sign it tonight and then by tomorrow or this week, it's. It's in the books, in their books, and uh, we don't get jumped by somebody else um, that, that comes in ahead of us. All right, further discussion on a motion to amend. Trustee Jan Miller. Um, I, and could we just make sure that um, the emails come to the village email address and um, all transactions, if it's going through snail mail, go to the PO box for the village? That's all. In regards to this area? Yes. Yeah. Okay. In regards to the fireworks. Fireworks contract. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion on a motion to amend. No further discussion. Uh, it's an addition of money, so roll call, please. Trustee Hudson? Aye. Trustee Peeper? Aye. Trustee Baum? Aye. Trustee Kaminsky? Aye. Trustee Jan Miller? Aye. Trustee Rick Miller? Aye. Trustee Myers? Aye. Trustee Knight Rider? No. President Walter? Aye. Motion carried. Back to the motion as amended. Further discussion? No further discussion. Roll call vote, please. Trustee Baum? Trustee Rick Miller? Trustee Hudson? Aye. Trustee Kaminsky? Trustee Jan Miller? Aye. Trustee Myers? Aye. Trustee Knight Rider? Aye. Trustee Peeper? Aye. President Walter? Aye. Motion carried. Next item under new business is item C, creation of a nonprofit corporation to manage 4th of July activities. Motion to approve new business oh. item C. I'm just gonna jump in actually before we do that. <laughs> Take it away. Sorry. Um, so the, uh, the, the big question, at least initially, uh, as we look into uh, how we uh, create the organization uh, is that it's obviously a nonprofit corporation. Uh, typically, as all of you, I believe, are aware, uh, corporations have a board of directors that operates. Uh, the question uh, that uh, our, um, well, my associate has that's been working on the documents uh, is what do we want that board to look like? Do we want it to be uh, members of this body? Do we want it to be, um, you know, something different? Uh, and, um, you know, I guess the, the long-term intent of, you know, does this body want to continue to, to be kind of the controlling part of that board? Uh, or would the thought be that, that at some point it would transition into a, um, you know, all members of the public type body? Thoughts? Don't we have to have a second to the motion first? Well, the motion's kind of on a, a hold, but you can put a second out there if you like. And then do, do discussion. I'd like. Okay, motion made and seconded. Discussion, question. Is any answers, any thoughts? Yeah, so so it would be a, a members of this board and obviously obviously the the community uh the the name was chosen so it is not actually limited to fourth of july uh it would be an entity to help out any any celebration in in germantown not not one specific what is the name uh we're on wisconsin celebrate germantown wisconsin thank you Okay, so two members of this board, three members of this board. I mean, we're we're creating a a, a, a new group. So right now, I, there's three because you have uh, Trustee Myers, Trustee Jan Miller, and, and Trustee Hudson. Yeah. Is that the consensus of where you want to go for a uh, overview of of that committee, where there are three members of the village board as part of that committee? I would think so. Yes. And do you, do you want any additional members on the board? Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> what's the total number? It, 
you know, in, in the sense, for example, the, the the default kind of by statute typically is five members on a corporate body. Um, you know, you have your president, your vice president, your secretary, and then two non uh, you know type positions. A little more, I'd like seven, please. One one coming from uh, maybe the the school board. Do we need motions in order for that to be approved in that manner? Or can we make it as part of the general motion? I think we could do an amendment after all of the okay. kind of details are hashed out to include all those details. Okay. All right, so we have three village board members, a total quantity on the board of seven. One of those seven are also a, a preferred member of the school board. And one from village staff. Three, four, five. So that would five. leave two. Two citizens. Two residents. Okay. okay. Anything else? Then I would need an amendment to make that inclusive. Trustee Jan Miller. Um, since we have created the 501c3. Not yet. We, we have village board, board on the uh, the board, um, do the meetings have to be in the boardroom? Shouldn't be. They need to be publicly noticed. Right. You would, you would have a quorum uh, of this, well, it, it, a potential quorum of this body. Um, so you would have to publicly notice it. It wouldn't have to be here. You could do it at some other public location. You wouldn't want to do it at your house. Because you, if you're going to publicly notice it, then you you have the opportunity for public input uh, and also people to attend. Yeah, I know, but it could be a meeting room. Sure. Yeah, could yeah. Be at I the mean, pavilion we or public whatever. Public safety doesn't always have to meet in this room. In some cases, uh, years ago, we used to have it at the annex um, in the police department. Okay. Uh, sometimes we, if we couldn't get that room, we've we've had other uh, meetings in uh, the library. Uh, yeah, in the conference yeah. rooms area, it's it's a wherever it's noticed as part of the public notice, right? Okay, so that the public knows if they want to participate or 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 uh, witness, then they know where to go to do so. Okay. All right. So, can I have a motion to uh, to find the the uh, the outline of the board, please, as an amendment? I motion that. Okay, as it was I'll discussed in in. And uh, dic not only say dictated, but entered about yes. Right to the village attorney. All right. Do I have a second on that? I'll second. Motion to amend, made and seconded. Any discussion? Just Rick, <clears throat> excuse me, Rick Miller. Just a, a couple questions. So if if you do this and and we keep this structure, that means it's really village control, right? So this is never going to go to the public. I mean, you've got three trustees, you've got a staff member, and you've got a school board member. That leaves only yeah. two people, re two residents on the board. Right. Second question I have is, um, if we write it as minimum of, of, ex trustees, two trustees as an example, yeah. mm -hmm. but you can have three. Is is that right. acceptable? You can, you can do it however you want in terms of the the makeup of the membership, and obviously you can change it. You know as. As you go along, too, okay. uh, that if you so decide... if this if this were to become going to use Cedarburg, <laughs> Cedarburg has their own committee for all their festivals, mm -hmm. um, and it's not run by the government. So if it would ever come to that, we could uh, amend this and adjust it as as need be. Correct. Okay. So I, I think starting off, then it's probably a good get its foothold. Yeah. You know, and if it needs to uh, you know, change later on, or can. And move to residential we, or residence we, would be, be okay. Will we need bylaws? Well, that's what we're talking about is yeah. what we include in those. Those can be amended. Correct. Further discussion on a motion to amend. No further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Not opposed. Motion carries. Back to the motion as amended. Further discussion. No further discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Not opposed. Motion carries. Thank you. 
Next item under new business is item D, painting design for water towers. Give us some more information and visuals on this. We have the Director of Public Works, Mr. Atachik. Good evening. Um, as we've all been discussing for a long time, the current water towers are needed repair. Um, also, the addition of a new tower four over in the um, Tate Industrial Park um, will need to be painted when it's done. So, as the heading uh, titles, um, we're gonna. I like to begin the discussion for a new painting design for the Village of Germantown water towers. We started the process some time ago, trying to evaluate where what we should be doing. Um, you can see the current. I'll go back. The current towers um, are in poor shape. The one on the left is is Tower Three on Mequon Road, and uh, the one on the right is the Tower One. It's called Tower One behind the uh, fire station. Please note the different fonts I have at top. That wasn't by accident because the fonts will be discussed as we go forward and looking at what should be on the water tower. Okay. Uh, the road to the change um, began um, with the Building Construction and Oversight Committee. Um, we reviewed many, many uh, tank paintings that, that exist. You can go on the internet and uh, you can put yourself to sleep looking at thousands of different mm -hmm. tower paint um, scenarios. Um, also, driving around, once I was um, sort of entrusted with doing this, every time I went past another water tower I had seen before, you stop and take a picture of it. So you, we accumulated a, a bunch of pictures. Um, we also direct, we were directed uh, by the village board to, to um, forego the existing logo um, that are on the towers and, and, and look for a new, a new paint scheme. Um, so the staff assembled several designs for review that we'll see as I go forward. Um, the consulting firm of Short Elliott Henderson, SEH as they go by, um, offered us um, great assistance in doing some of the graphic um, portrayals that we're going to see. Um, we, to get the, to get the boat sort of floating down the river, we came up with nine designs um, and we threw those out to the staff in a survey at Village Hall and at the Village Library just to get an initial soft opinion on what the staff would pick out of the nine towers. Um, of the three highest voted or actually two highest voted towers from those um, from that survey and one additional tower. We put that out on Facebook about two weeks ago and we got, a, I think it's about a 500, 582 responses so far. Um, the responses were pretty quick the first week and a half or so, two weeks, um, and um, they've slowed down now a bit. It's been out there for a while. Uh, we looked at the uh, the cost for those three potential options to see what the increased cost might be over the basic tower cost we have for tower four. Um, tonight we're going to have this discussion at village board meeting and hopefully from tonight we can get some directions on which route to continue. So various tank schemes that we looked at, this is these are a few of, of what's out there, some local, some not. Um, you can tell they, they are quite a variety of ones. You can find one out. Um, west towards whitewater it's what town it is there's one just painted yellow with a smiley face on it so as you go through you can go down to rosewood illinois and see one painted as a rose so we we started with um with this at the uh, building construction oversight committee and and pondered through a, a whole bunch of towers this is just an example um, you can see some varieties of it the mountain falls in the bottom left um, they went in the white color, they went the, the dark letters, and the dark color, they went white letters. Um, you'll see one that we, we saw that uh, is in Maguanago that's all light blue with white letters, which is quite unique. Slide. Um, I want to give some example of how we got um, to the tower graphics. You'll see the next slide. Um, SEH, what they did was we, uh, they did an aerial drone survey of all three towers. Um, from that survey, we were approached um, by staff from SEH that they could actually take a picture from the drone flight and, and um, color it in to any coloring scheme that we would want them to do. And, and I believe they, I think they did four towers for us. So I'd like to thank um, SEH for, for the assistance they gave us because it, it gave us a good representation. You'll see uh, on the next slide of the actual tower in place with the trees in the background as they sit right today. Slide. So these are the um, towers that we sent to the uh, staff um, for a survey. Um, these were 
uh, most of them are tower three. And the results of these towers from the, the public the, uh, staff survey, um, I don't know if you can read that, but the two tone. From Chevron, so they're about race and sex. Uh, they came in with the highest votes and um, pretty consistent between the village hall column, the first one on the left, and then the middle one is the library. You can see how they're consistent. Got zero votes from staff. Go ahead. So we took the two highest, we took the two highest um, vote getters, and then the one in the bottom left was. Um, a design that um, Trustee Baum submitted um, to try to and try to keep colors of Germantown. Um, so these are the three towers we put out for Facebook today, and um, gray tower bottom. Of Have a little bit on the top, about nine percent that voted none of them. So we tried to get staff opinion. We tried to get um, the public's opinion on on towers. All this is leading to the point to instill a discussion of the board, and um, hopefully we can arrive at some sort of color scheme that we can move forward with. So if you have any questions for me, I, I will stay up here. Um, I'd like to have a discussion. Of the board and uh, what they think um, for a tower design. So is is that one in the bottom left hand corner? Is that all gray? And then it's the it's, signs on the top. Yeah, it's a darker. It's It'll a be a medium gray, a lighter tone of gray because white is always dirty. So it's not going to be that dark of a gray. It'll be a little bit. It'll be a gray tone of white, like a Bunzel gray. Okay. Trustee Hudson. Uh, Larry, does it matter? Does any particular color uh, retard that algae growth that we get on the the lower half, or is no. it is it it's it's not going to matter what color no. they are? No, it's more or less the color that is chosen on there. The, the, yeah. It doesn't retard the algae growth. You just have to have a better cleaning cleaning program to get, keep up. I refer to the one I go past twice a day. The uh, the um, County Medical Center freighter, the one in the tower that's mm -hmm. in tone blue. There's brown underneath from the algae drying and dying on there, and it just stands out on that dark blue. So I don't, there isn't any kind of paint you can put on there. The paints are better. I asked if there's any consideration as to the color of paint used, and um, it came back that no, there isn't. You may see a slight fading, but once it, if the slight fading occurs, it sets itself and, and it doesn't continue to fade any more than that nowadays. So it's going to be the hardest to see it on the lower left left hand corner though because that that would be the if it turns if it turns brownish like the one at the county medical complex i think it would show up almost on any color it's yeah. it's kind of it's kind of gross looking it's right now to, should paint a brown then <laughs> trustee jan miller one of your points was we voted against using the germantown logo why did we Yes, yes. Against it. Oh, it's, it's too difficult to read. Can't read it. Oh, okay. When you're driving by it. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's very expensive. Oh, very expensive. Okay, thanks. So you can see that two of the towers were trying to maintain the the, the German flag colors. Right. We need a motion or. If, just oh, I was just just a uh, information. Or are we looking for? You? No, I'm just looking for having a discussion. Information. Which way should we go? We need, we need somebody to pick the the scheme. I think David Baum did a good job. I like yeah. his selection. The dark bottom. How many how many votes did you put in on that website? <laughs> <laughs> I was pounding away all day. <laughs> yeah. I, yes. I don't. You know. I I don't mind the. The one in the bottom corner, any of them that has a darker color in the bottom, I prefer just to try to hide that. Right. Anytime it's white, it just shows up that much quicker. So you get kind of a length of uh, where it's not as visual o over time. Um, we, being that it's black, we don't have to worry about that for, for heat or for sun or anything like that. Uh, it's not going to retain more heat and do anything to the inside, right, Larry? Correct. As long as the top is a lighter color, that's all we worry about. Okay. 
Uh, I, I like the new font. Uh, I'm not, um, I, I know we've had that Gothic style Germanic font for a while, um, but it, um, I think it, it's, like you said, it's hard to read. And uh, as, we're, as we're looking at uh, with the new tower and, and redoing towers, I, I have no problem with what I see in that bottom left-hand corner. You can't read it. It says village of above the GE. Do you want to say village of or welcome to? We've been bouncing that back and forth. I'd say take it off. Just German town. Just yeah. German town. Yeah. Is that welcome to? Yeah, you're it. Is? Yeah, you're. It's, it's, take it off. We have citizen care. Sandy, you got to come forward. I People are know. watching. My name is Sandy Dobrogowski, North 105, West 14709 Wilson Drive. The only these are all awesome. I just have one question on the on the logo we have right now mm -hmm. at the very beginning. There's a little semblance of an American flag. Is that something that we would want to consider with this? Thank you. We, Somebody's thinking. We kept putting them on to get the color schemes work. And the last concept that was put out there, it was just an American flag above the word Germantown in a waving pattern. So if you want yeah. the American flag, take off the village of and put the American flag waving up above that. How did that look? No, we don't. It's on the current water tower and it's not well received as a logo for the. Yeah, other comments. Had, one of the concepts concepts was take that, take the red, white and blue stripes and at the bottom of the bell where the tower starts, do something down there in red, white and blue. It. It becomes. Busy. Politically incorrect to put somebody else's colors above ours. Right. So yeah, plus it gets busy. Yeah, it, it got busy. Yes. You looking for a motion, Larry? In a direction? Just some direction. A, a motion would be better, I guess. Okay, a motion to approve Which Towns one? Tower. <laughs> <laughs> We, if that's the one we want to select, we could go back and, and get a better coloring done of it and, yes. and, a, and a bigger yes. edition yeah. and bring uh, that back. Yeah, that would be we, fine. I would, I would say that, like, motion to approve the tower that was the highest rated on Facebook and give staff some leeway to, you know, with the colors but not change the scheme. Second. Motion made and second in discussion. Uh, I like the Germantown lettering better on the other two that's my only comment but i like the colors that's, yes the font that's also a choice to make what that's also a choice to make on the lettering so we can take yeah okay take that font put it down on the gray tower yeah. so you're going with a, a times over a kind of an aerial for helvetica Okay. Further discussion? No further discussion. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One abstains. You put all your votes in on the website. <laughs> Motion carries. Next item under, thank you, Larry. Larry. Next item yeah. under new business is item E, Germantown Community Library Annual Report. With us tonight, we have the... Sure. Sure. Welcome, Trisha. How are you? Good, thanks. Don't scan it. Scan will be waiting here. Do you want to sign these? I'll be late. Do you mind? 
Thank you. No. That's a brilliant idea. No. That's behind my head. Thank you. This is for the vehicle on consent agenda. Okay. Good evening, my name is Trisha Smith and I'm the director of the Germantown Community Library. There you go. Okay, thank you. I'm here today to talk about our annual report from 2021. All of these numbers are compiled from our annual report that we submit every year to the Department of Wisconsin Public Instruction. In 2021, we circulated 334,000 items. This includes print, audio, visual, and also our digital collections. We also added over 6,000 new items to our collection. And this number also includes 80,000 items that are in and out of our building. We work with the Monarch Library System to have daily delivery. So that includes um, items that go into our library and also items out of our library to other uh, serve other libraries as well. This is just a breakdown of our physical circulation. So that includes the print and the uh, audio visual items. You can see the village of Germantown equates to 65.2% of those items and then followed by Richfield at 19.4%. There's also about 3% from the town of Jackson and 3% from the village of Jackson and then a small percentage from the town of Germantown. The other uh, equates to 9.2%. That includes a lot of our surrounding communities, including Menominee Falls, Cedarburg, West Bend, and Mequon. Here is a graph that shows our circulation trends. So we were growing pretty high until 2010 and we took a dip down. These are pretty consistent with libraries, um, not only in the area, but across Wisconsin and the United States as well. Uh, from there, starting in 2016, we had seen a lot of growth until of course the pandemic hit in 2020. Uh, you can see at the end where we, went down significantly due to significant closures in our building for six weeks and also just lower population due to COVID um, thoughts with people staying home more and not coming out in public and having limited resource um, access to the resources that we had. 2021, we bounced back up. We're not quite at where we were, but we are uh, only about 10,000 behind. This is also very, very similar to what we're seeing in other communities in the area. General library usage is going back up again, just like our circulation numbers. We have over 14,000 registered library cards, about 10,000 of that is Village of Germantown, and then 4,000 is our other surrounding areas. 25,000 uh, questions asked, we do track all of our services at the library, so this equates to anything from directional questions to very in-depth research questions that we see in our building. We are continuing to do curbside pickup on um, this did lower back when we opened. We saw a lot of people returning to the library, but we do still offer curbside pickup and that is a service we're going to continue to offer in the future. And we did 17,000 curbside pickup appointments last year. We had 84. Do you have a 1700, I'm sorry, 1700 curbside pickup appointments. Uh, we had 84,000 library visits in 2021. This equates to about 275 visits a day. Uh, right now, um, in April, we are seeing that continue to rise significantly again towards the increased traffic due to programming and increased usage of the library after COVID. We also track our electronic usage. Uh, we have 47 public library logins for our last year. We also have 10,000 wireless logins, and this is wireless logins that happen either inside our building or right outside of our parking lot. 
We subscribe to a number of databases. So that's all you'll see that number. And then we also have free online courses. We had 146 courses that were taken last year. Last year, we had over 15,000 people attend 240 programs. Again, this was down significantly with COVID. We did move completely back to in person programming in September. Throughout the uh, spring and summer, we were transitioning into that. We had a lot of our programming outside in larger facilities and use registration for those programming options to provide more space for our community. Some of the new programs we added included our very popular grab and go kits, outdoor book walks, and also virtual programming. These again are programs that were more heavy last year in um, with COVID, but we are continuing to do all of these right now and we're gonna keep continuing to do them and just fitting them into our normal programming on a lower basis so we can offer more variety to our community. A couple highlights in 2021, we added a couple new collections, our video game collection, which continues to be very popular. Also our Library of Things Junior collection, we have uh, puzzles, phonics kits, games, all different kinds of things that people can check out of our library. We will be uh, adding to that later this year for adults and also expanding our uh, junior collection. We did add credit card payment option at our circulation desk. Um, that was very popular with our friends book sale and we'll continue to use that throughout the year. And then we did add Hoopla at the beginning of last year. That is another digital platform in addition to OverDrive with the app Libby. So it just adds a lot more variety to our digital resources. It also um, includes items that don't have any holds on them. So if you are familiar with OverDrive and Libby at all, you do have a lot of holds. Sometimes patrons have to wait three, four, five, six months to get items. Hoopla is a paper uh, view model, so it allows us to give instant access to all those digital materials. Couple of our highlighted projects. Uh, we have a new file share system for our staff. We relocated our adult paperback collection. We um, launched our customer service survey in May. We have over 200 responses to that survey, which we were very ha happy with and uh, constantly use that to improve our service at our circulation desks and, and our library in general. We also got a lot of new signage updates. If you notice our building across the street has a brand new sign up front. We also added some directional signs on the roads and around um, the building and inside the building to direct patrons to our circulation desk as well. Looking to the future, some of our uh, big projects for this year include an expanded outreach program and also expanding our community partnerships. We are working to create a mobile library that will be launched in May. That'll give us the ability to not only bring programming to events, but also bring part of our library collection to our events around Germantown, Richfield, Jackson, and also some of our partner organizations, um, such as senior living facilities, schools, and daycares in the area. Working on our expanded library, um, library things collections, we should be launching our uh, experience passes later this week. So that'll include uh, going to places like the zoo, Betty Brin, and the domes, all with your library card. So we're very excited to um, launch that collection. We are working on completing our five year strategic planning process with Wills. We just finished up our last workshop in April. So right now they are gathering lots of data, working on our plan, and we hope to have our plan released later this summer. As we continue to look to our future in 2022 and beyond, we continue to evaluate our library needs and look for ways that we can better serve the community with the services and spaces we have. Some of our issues with our building include uh, not having quiet space for patrons that want a quieter atmosphere. As we continue to grow, so has our noise level. So we are continuing to look at different options for quiet atmospheres in our building looking for more space for our collection and also spaces to do our programs. We do have our large community room, which works very well, but we are seeing 
a much greater need for not only programming in our library, but working with different partners in the community to provide joint programming. Our staff workspace and storage space is quickly filling up as we um, continue to add new program services. We're seeing a greater need for more staff workspace and also storage space that we need to utilize for all of these uh, programs that we are hoping to continue in the future. Questions. Mm -hmm. So, um, you mentioned uh, um, the mobile library. Yep. Uh, do you, do you know what that looks like yet? I mean, is, is there a requirement of a vehicle back in when I was a kid? Now it's a long time ago. <laughs> uh, we had the bookmobile, which was basically yes. a converted bus. Yep. Uh, yep. That would come around. Is, are, are we looking at something that looks something like that or is uh, it more small? The same idea, but a much, much lower concept. So we have, we actually got funding from a local bank in the area. So we have a trailer that we purchased and it's a four by six foot trailer. So we're converting that into a mobile library. Okay, cool. So it'll be, it'll be the same uh, concept as the bookmobile, but not as uh, big and also uh, expensive okay. to maintain. And then you had mentioned some expanding of, of uses for the library card uh, in other venues around town how did do, how does that work i mean does it give you a reduced cost does it cover the fee of entry what how does that work so for bringing like the books around town that and then you said betty brand and the zoo and sure like so we actually buy um libraries can now buy subscriptions to these um attractions so places like the zoo and betty brand um so what we actually get is we are able to, we buy it on a yearly cost at a lower rate and then we're able to offer it to our patrons at no cost so you can go to the library check out a pass with your library card and then get a three-day admission to the zoo that includes uh eight people and parking at no cost okay. to you good deal and, and then if i go in the library i don't have to be quiet anymore <laughs> no you don't <laughs> so we've been morphing into a more community focused atmosphere um, with all of our programs uh, we added a lot of uh, items to the early literacy area it really is there are quiet times but it really is more of a community center where people are learning and sharing we do have areas in the back that are more quiet and some study rooms so we actually just passed um, a noise policy a couple months ago that we're working on implementing that just states that we don't maintain a complete level of quiet. Um, we do have restrictions, of course, like screaming and rowdy behavior, like running, jumping and things we do not allow. But as far as like normal conversation, okay. we do have that in the library. Oh, I, I wouldn't know how to act. <laughs> <laughs> library. I tend to be a little bit loud in the library, <laughs> so. <laughs> Dennis? Oh, Trustee Myers. I think you're doing an excellent job. I'm really amazed in regard to uh, everything. Every year you're coming up with other things and so on. The mobile library and what Thank you just you. mentioned to uh, the president in regard to that aspect. That's that's very interesting. Uh, I think the more you bring that out to the uh, families and so on and so forth, they can utilize yep. that this summer. Yeah, and really, you know, our goal is to continue to grow and just be more relevant to the community and, and look at the needs every year and always more to do. So thank you. Chan Miller. Um, we're, <coughs> we're having a, um, uh, you've all gotten an invitation for a tour of the library and there's still some of you that haven't been able to make it, but we're still available. So just give us our time, uh, a time that you are, and we can go into the evening as well. You know, we and we, early morning and early course. morning. Yep. So, um, the idea is to tour the facility, see um, how we're filled to the brim, and uh, looking to um, actually expand that um, second floor s structure mezzanine. Actually, it's more of a, not the whole floor. Partial second floor. Yes. So it would have a look like the Fiendsville Library does? Um, Fiendsville. Uh, I, um, Mequon I, Fiendsville. Yeah. Mequon Fiendsville. That one, we're hoping to utilize more space. The Mequon Fiendsville is open in the middle and then there's some space around. Mm -hmm. We're looking at hopefully filling up more of that space in the middle. It would add about 15,000 square feet. So if you've been to um, more like Hartford, uh, West Bend, 
Menominee Falls. Menominee Falls mm -hmm. and Cedarburg all have that second floor, yeah, which okay. we're continuing to tour libraries and put some options okay. in place. Great. Rick Miller. Quick question, Trisha. I think yep. last week when I toured, you mentioned that the computers, the public computers there are utilized almost full daily. They can be at different times of the day, yes. Is there uh, any provisions for more? I mean, that is something we're looking into right now. We just opened up with COVID. We had um, the middle computers weren't being utilized. So we just recently in the last couple of weeks opened those up. So we're continuing okay. to evaluate those numbers and look at um, if we need to add more. I'm really surprised there. that. You know, public computers are still being yeah. utilized like that. Yeah, and you know that afternoon, that like one to three time is pretty busy. So we do have reports where we can see every hour of the day what ones are being used. So that's something we're continuing to look at to see if adding those couple computers is going to meet our needs or if we should look at adding more. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? All right, thanks, Trish. Thank nice you. job. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda are two closed sessions, item F and G. Item F is Police Department Union, Union Local 306 Grievance, Vacation Separation Payout. Village Board may enter into closed session per Wisconsin Statutes 19.85, subsection 1, subparagraph G, for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or likely to become involved and item G, which is Department of Workforce Development wage claim regarding vacation separation payout for former employee James Thiep. The village board may enter into closed session per Wisconsin statutes 19.85 subsection 1 subparagraph G for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the governmental body who is rendering oral or written advice concerning strategy to be adopted by the body with respect to litigation in which it is or likely to become Involved. Motion to go into closed session for the letter F. Motion made. Do I have a second? Motion made and seconded. Discussion. No discussion. Roll call vote, please. Yes. In, wait a minute. Who's included? Um, <clears throat> I'd uh, ask the uh, uh, police chief, support services manager, and uh, the village attorney. Okay. <laughs> Ready? Yes. Trustee Myers? Yes. Trustee Baum? Trustee Hudson? Aye. Trustee Kaminsky? Trustee Rick Miller? Aye. Trustee Jan Miller? Aye. Trustee Knight Rider? Aye. President Walter? Aye. Motion carries. Motion for G. Need a motion for G. Somebody else? Um, I make. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Who's included? Same, same, except for chief, right? Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. A roll call vote, please. Trustee Baum, Trustee Jan Miller, aye. Trustee Rick Miller, aye. Trustee Myers, aye. Trustee Knight Rider, aye. Trustee Hudson, aye. Trustee Kaminsky, President Walter, aye. All right, before we go into closed session, uh, the next regular village board meeting will be on Monday, May 2nd at 7 p.m. here in the Village Hall boardroom. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you all for watching and have a good night. Trustees, turn your microphones off, please. <laughs>